So this slide shows MRP explosion process. But instead of going through it conceptually, I will explain this process through the actual problems. Again, this is MRP uh, terminologies that you need to know. But those terminologies also appear in the actual problem. So I will do this through the actual problems. Let's go to the problem one. MRP explosion problem. This is about Juno lighting. As you see here, Juno lighting makes two special light, which is VH1 model and VH2 model. And this is the weekly schedule, week 1 through week 8. And these are the customer demands. So this is the from uh, master production schedule, MPS. And each model, VH1, VH2, which is end items, require the one unit of light socket. And this information is about inventory uh, related information. For example, VH1 model has 85 of on hand inventory and then 200 of order quantity and one week of lead time and zero safety stock. So on hand inventory is just simply beginning inventory to start and quantity order, the order quantity, this is last sizing strategy. So every product has last sizing strategy. So you have to order 200 unit when there is the any lacking. And lead time information in the safety stock is the additional information, uh, additional inventory you have to keep no matter what to in order to avoid any stock out situation. Let's go to the <coughs> Next slide. Again, you need the information from master production schedule. This is a gross requirement for end items. And we draw the BOM, which is a product structure tree based on the previous information. The VH1 model requires one component of socket. VH2 model is one socket required. So two end items and each end item requires one component. Finally, inventory record uh, information. So I will go to the Excel. Okay, here is the BOM product structure tree. And I plugged in all the inventory related information here. And we need the master production schedule input. So week one, 34, 45, 48, and then 48. And 104, 155, 140, 145. These are the customer demands that for end item and items VH1 and VH2 model. So in particular week, we have to produce these amount. But since this is end item, we can also calculate the socket, how much socket we need and when to order that kind of thing should be uh, determined in this MRP explosion. And starting with, you know, project available balance. This uh, line is important because that will help you to track what is your current balance for each week. And we have to track all the way to week eight. And since this VH1 model has 85 of on-hand inventory, which is beginning inventory, we can start with 85. On week one, we have to consume 34 customer demands. So we have to subtract this number that become your ending inventory, ending balance of week one. This uh, balance carries over to the next period since there is no customer demands. Week four, 
we have six remaining balance. Right? And then you carry over to the next period. Week six, we have only six balance, six unit in balance, but customer demand is 48, which is greater than our balance. So we have to order. But before that, we have to, you know, identify how much we are lacking. That goes to your net requirement. So 48 is customer demand, but we have only six balance. So 42 is the what we lack. But based on our last sizing strategy, 200 units should be ordered no matter what. And you have to also know that plan order receipt, plan order release. These are two things, but plan order re receipt means, okay, we order 200 units, so we receive by week six, but we have to release the order based on the lead time. So one week advance. So we order, release order 200 units, and we receive order 200 unit by week six so that we fulfill customer demands. What is your current balance? We order 200 unit. What we lack is 42. So currently we have a 158 ending balance. This balance carries over to the next period. And then what is our ending balance is 110. This is for VH1 model. Let's go to the VH2 and uh, VH2 model. Starting with v uh, week one, project available balance. Our current starting inventory is, beginning inventory is 358. But we have to consume customer demands. So we can start with 240.54. This carries over to the next period. We have to consume customer demand. So our ending balance in week 4 is 99. Week 6. Our balance is less than customer demand, so we have to order. But we have to know how much we lack. So 140 minus 99, 41 is what we lack, which is a net requirement. And we order 400 units based on our last sizing strategy. We receive it by week six. To do that, we have to order week one, one week advance because of the one week lead time. And Again, we ordered one four hundred, but we what we lack is forty one, so three hundred fifty nine is our ending balance, and then our ending balance for last week, which is eight week eight, is two hundred fourteen. This is for our end uh, end items, but think about in order to produce VH one. VH2 model in week 5, release these numbers. We need a one unit of socket. So this is 1 to 1 ratio. Without that, VH1, VH2 model cannot be released by this time. So we have to actually make a growth requirement for socket by this time. So 200 unit goes to 200 here. And then 400 unit from VH2 model goes to the socket. We have to make required for socket for the 600 unit. 200 from VH1, 400 from VH2. So that we make a socket ready so that we produce VH1, VH2 model by this time. So this is not about customer demand. This is about you know, just you know how much we need it. This is required unit of socket to be ready for and the unit of and the item of VH1 and VH2. But these are our customer demands. We have to make sure. 
Since we know what we have to produce in week 5 for SOCKET, we can start with project available balance in week 1. Think about here, our beginning inventory is 425, but we have safety stock policy is 20 units. So we have to keep 20 units no matter what. We can use this unit to provide you know, cushion for safety stock, you know, any uh, stock out situation. So we have to subtract this number. So we can actually start with one 405 unit. They go carriage over. Because there is no cut, uh, no growth requirement here. Week five, our growth requirement is greater than our balance, so we need to uh, make order based on the our last sizing policy. Five hundred unit should be ordered. Before that, what is our net requirement? Six hundred minus four hundred five, so one ninety five. A plan order we see should be here, 500, but we have to order in three week advance. So that we receive order by week five. So what is the current balance? We order 500, but what we lack is only 195. Currently, we have 305 unit at the end of period five. And that carries over to the all the way to we gate. Okay, that's all for question one. To sum, these are the two end unit, I mean end items, and each item requires one socket. So 600 unit should be produced here so that we provide for VH1 and VH2, week five. So that they can fulfill customer order and they can carry on. Okay, so that's it.